we pray. Father God, as we consider your word this morning, would you open our eyes? Would you open our minds and would you open our hearts? Amen. I was um, privileged to be able to go to a deanery confirmation service last Sunday evening. And at it, Bishop Sadhu said a three-line phrase which hit me. And it hit me because it summed up what Andrew and I and Jeff and Sue and, and all sorts of people have attempted to spend a good number of weeks talking about. What he said was that the Christian faith is to know Christ, to be known by Christ, and to make Christ known. And I think that beautifully summarises our whole sermon series. This idea of belonging means that we need to know Christ. This idea of being known by Christ means that our belonging is a reciprocal thing, which means we know that God knows us too. And that the result of that is for us to make Christ known to other people. And so today, I want us to think and consider that way in which we all have a part to play in all three of those things. And so let's begin in John chapter 13. Our reading starts, A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. I wonder if you can picture yourself in that room during Passover with the disciples. I don't think they were nodding at this bit. A new commandment? But Jesus has been on about this for the whole time. How is this now new? What's different about it to when he was up on that mountain talking to the crowds? What's different about it from when he was in the temple courts explaining and debating with the Pharisees and the Sadducees and anyone else who wanted to talk with him and listen to him? Is it really that new of a command to love one another? But I wonder what we would think if we consider for a moment what kind of love is Jesus talking about? Andrew and I and about 20 other people have been blessed to be able to be chaplains at the Download Festival over the last three days, and some are there now today, where 100,000 or more people love something. They love rock and roll. They love festivals. They love music. They love other things which probably aren't worth mentioning during a sermon at a church. And in, and in some ways, some of that love is quite like the love Jesus was talking about. It's a love that draws people together, isn't it? It's not often that our roads are so jammed by people's desire to come and join in with something. Imagine if every Sunday we had the same traffic congestion because people wanted to come into church. We would like that, wouldn't we? That wouldn't be a bad bit of traffic congestion from our perspective. The other thing is that there is no one person on that download campsite that necessarily looks or sounds like another. The more we went round and the more we spoke to people, the more we realised there were people from all sorts of different walks of life. But the love that they share for the music that they enjoy is a love that breaks down barriers. There were families, children, friends, couples, single people, people that have saved all year to get there, people who this is one of many festivals they can afford to attend. However, at the same time, I think it's fair to say that some of the things that our Download Festival brothers and sisters over there love are not the kind of love that Jesus is talking about. In some ways, when we love something like music or a style or something like that, it's, it's a love that feeds our own interest. All around the arena, there were more and more things that would help people encourage them in their own love of the same thing. In some ways, some of that love is about the consumption of it, almost to an excess when at a festival. 
sometimes the love that we can all engage in in different ways and around different things is one that actually turns us in on our own interests. It turns us in to love that thing. And it doesn't have to be rock and roll. It could be just as much cake or classical music or any other of the things that we might say we love. And so back to that question, what kind of love is Jesus talking about? Well, can I suggest it is a radical love? In the words of Newton Faulkner, who is a musician, but not a rock musician, love, love is a verb, love is a doing word. This love that Jesus speaks of is a doing kind of love. Not a consuming kind of love, but a love that seeks the best for the other. The words that we read in our gospel reading today are in the context of Jesus just having washed his disciples' feet. Including Judas' feet. And the words he's just said are just as Judas has exited the room. He now turns to the, the rest of the disciples and says, a new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. Not only does it look to that foot washing that's just happened, Jesus is looking ahead to that ultimate act of sacrifice and service, that of his death and resurrection. And so we are commanded to love. How does that feel to you? It's hard to command someone to love, isn't it? In fact, it, it kind of flies in the face of what we think love is. You can't command me to love. That doesn't make sense, does it? But as Jesus speaks about this commandment, it's a commandment because it's a response to the love that we have been shown through Jesus. Jesus doesn't command us to love because he didn't. He commands us to love because he did, as I have loved you. Therefore, the prerequisite of that command is just to follow in the example of it. It's not something that hasn't already been done, but that doesn't make it easy. And one of the reasons that that isn't easy is that unless we know love, unless we have experienced love, how... Can we give love? Unless we remind ourselves that we know Christ's love and that Christ knows and loves us, how could we possibly show that love forwards to anyone else? Often the direction that we take as the church for that love is to love the world. The command is a new command give you love one another and that other we assume to be the rest of the world those that don't yet know Jesus and that's right that is right we are called by Jesus to go and make disciples to go and spread the good news but let's look again at who Jesus is speaking to there Jesus is speaking to the church the founders of the church and he's telling that the church needs to love one another. How hard is that? When Christians disagree, there can be countless tensions, can't there? You only need to read the Church Times or sometimes even the National News to see and hear about issues and debates that the church are having amongst themselves. That do not sound loving in fact, might have absolutely no basis for love in their disagreement. And part of the reason that that might be is because when Christians disagree, there is a tension between a passion for the truth, to be doing things well and right, and our command to love. Because the first thing lost in a conflict is love, isn't it? It's the first thing out of the window when we are riled or we disagree is love for the other group but this command that Jesus gives the first application is within the church 
in the early third century, a writer called Tertullian uh, wrote about Christians. He himself was a Christian, but he said, see how they love one another, how they are ready to die for one another. 200 years after these apostles first spread out of Jerusalem to share the good news, the church had grown and the witness of the church, the identifying feature of what the church was doing was that they were loving one another in a society where they shouldn't have been. By all accounts, slaves and masters shouldn't have been sharing time or space or food together. Women and men shouldn't have been sharing worship together in certain ways. And yet these Christians were doing it. Gary Burge wrote, Nothing so astonishes a fractured world as a community in which radical, faithful, genuine love is shared among its members. How would that look in our church? This idea of radical, faithful, genuine love shared amongst its members. Would that draw others in, do you think? Would that draw people into a community that loved one another, not because of the music they liked, or the way they dressed, or the type of service that they preferred? Because why? Why are we called to love one another, even if we don't share those things? Because Christ first loved us, and Christ first loved them. That's the why. And that's what the chaplaincy at Download has been trying to do and to share and to say. The biggest and most common question that I have heard is, why are you here? And it kind of makes sense. Why are we there? Why are we at a festival that largely doesn't want to talk or think about faith, wants to enjoy music and other things? Well, the answer is often along the lines of, because we just want to share this with you and help you if you're confused and be available for you. But mostly, we want to share that we love you. Why? Because I really like tattoos? No. <laughs> because I have a penchant for people in fishnets? Absolutely not. Because Christ first loves them. And we're called to communicate that. When we know that we are loved, we are then called to tell other people that they are loved even if we might find it hard to love them. So finally, we come to how. Well, can I suggest two things? Firstly, that love equals unity. Our Ephesians passage talked about the church becoming united. But that does not mean that love equals uniformity. We are not called to all become the same. God made us many and varied and different and loves us all. And so when our love for another seeks to force uniformity, we maybe need to look again at whether we're being loving. Secondly, love equals a cost. Jesus paid the ultimate cost. But maybe the cost to us means that love means we're not always in our comfort zone. We're not in that place where we feel safe with other people. Sometimes sharing the love that Jesus has for others means we exit our comfort zone. We go to a dusty, sweaty festival. We go to a pub. We talk to a neighbour that actually doesn't really like us. We call a family member who we've fallen out with. So how do we have a part to play? Well, when we know Christ, when we understand how Christ knows and loves us, the part we play is to make Christ known by loving others, without expecting a uniformity. And without expecting to always be within our comfort zone. Shall we pray? Father God, Jesus gives us this new command to love one another as you have loved us. Help us to understand truly what it means to love as you love us. 
And please, Lord, would you call us to those people who do not feel loved. Even if that introduces a cost to us, would you call us out to those places where we might make you known? Amen.